Welcome back to Hour 3 of the Nutra Medical Report and Clay and Iron Show. And we have our amazing and indimitable guest, uh, Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling. His website, you can easily Google by Googling Lord Sterling. That's his uh, sort of title from the British... Uh, <laughs> The Scottish British, title, Earl Scottish Sterling. Scottish title, Earl of Sterling. But the, the real issue is, of all the experts and people we have in the program in terms of the geopolitical and military history, uh, I guess your knowledge is Sterling. How's that? <laughs> yeah, uh, of course it's spelled different. Uh, the Earl yeah, just the other, from the I'm city. Not, exactly, it's S-T-I-R-L. S-T-I-R-L. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I just had a little bit of uh, uh, a uh, little play on little little play on words there. But the fact is, when it talks about equipment, geopolitical strategy, etc., you have a, what I call a strategic mind, and that's why when we you also because you're a believer, when we put the two together, uh, as they say, when our two witnesses, our intellect and the spirit, come together and say things that make sense, we better pay attention. And yeah, uh, you, you have you a blog that's. You can't begin to understand what's going on in the world today without uh, viewing it from a Christian perspective, because it, it really does not make sense. And if once you understand that uh, this is laid out in the Bible, particularly in the last book, the book of Revelation, uh, then it, it, it begins to make more sense. Now, there's always, you know, how do we interpret this and how do we interpret that? And, and good people will disagree on some points. That's fine. But get, try to get the broad context, the broad direction of what's going. Um, one of the things I try to do, Dr. Bill, is, is uh, as an analyst, I try to look at patterns, discover patterns, and, and, and kind of see where they're going. You back way off, don't just look at the trees, but the forest, and even back further off and look at the patterns in the forest. Hey, you got a bunch of signs, actually, on your website. I think they're, in a sense, what I call the typical Scottish humor, global economic collapse near. You're driving on the highway, and then it says, Third World War Approaching. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that's pretty good. I mean, uh, this is even better in some ways than SNL. And I know there's some new uh, SNL people that are leaving and going to get some new crops in there. But, you know, sometimes you can only get through to people when you use metaphors, when you use images, when you use kind of things that are kind of like the BS meter that you sometimes put up on your site. Uh, people uh, need to understand. <laughs> they, they have I to give, understand. I give the... the uh, uh, one flag, two flag, three flag, four flag, and the dreaded five flag BS flag award. And I think the last person that won that was Hillary Clinton, one of my favorite witches of all time. Well, I, I call her Hitlery. That's her name is actually Hit Hitlery <laughs> Rotten Clinton. You know, the witch of the West could take lessons from her. How's that from uh, Dorothy's Oz? Oh yeah, she's she's a child's play compared to this gal. She wants to blow up the world. Uh, here, here's yeah. here's what I'm finding, uh, and, and it's. Uh, 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 the breaking news is the UN Secretary General Kai Moon has said that uh, uh, Syrian President Assad has lost all legitimacy and is essentially blaming the uh, oh, roughly three recent uh, uh, massacres, uh, which included the outright uh, mass murder of uh, not just innocent men, but innocent women, children, babies. Six children, yeah, in Hula, Hula, the uh, town. Yeah, in-, in one, but there's been another major one and there was also a, a bus that was uh, a bunch of people killed on it. So, but anyway, um, uh, now the, what ha, what we've seen, uh, for instance, uh, well, let's let's go back. Uh, I'm 61, so I can go back to the JFK assassination. Uh, when the globalists want to pull uh, a, a do something really major and it's really rotten, they create a false narrative. So they created this false narrative that Oswald shot Kennedy with a very cheap mail order used uh, rifle that was falling apart and did wonders that even the best marksman couldn't do with uh, really good rifles. Uh, also, the, <laughs> the fact that there was a photograph of him standing in front of the book depository, book depository <laughs> uh, as the presidential motorcade is going past uh, made it, uh, he had to be been miraculous because he had to be in two places at one time. Okay, they created a false narrative there. Uh, they created a false False narrative on 911. This six foot six Arab guy sat on his butt in a cave in Afghanistan, and changed the laws of physics, etc., etc. Well, and well, the other, other failure on dialysis, right? 
Right, right, right. Many yeah. other false narratives. Yeah. Now we have the false narrative that uh, Assad. We have well, we had the false narrative that Assad was about to launch a chemical warfare attack against Europe after basically they didn't even have hardly enough food to eat in the country after the first Gulf War. So we had to do the second Gulf War. Um, and uh, now we have this narrative that Assad, at the worst, po- if he was going to do something so terrible, it would be the worst possible time for him to do it. But he's setting his forces in and slaughtering all these babies and women and children, rather like the false narrative in the First World War that the uh, Kaiser's soldiers were bayoneting Belgian babies. Uh, didn't happen, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and, and so we have this false narrative developing, and now, of course, uh, Kaiser Kai Moon, the UN Secretary General, who's this one more globalist puppet, they played the the Kai Moon card, and it's building. Uh, you also kind of have this false narrative: Obama is holding Netanyahu back uh, in attacking Iran, and you have two hands. One's talking about Iran, and the other one's talking about Syria. And, oh, we're holding back on Iran and Syria. Well, you know, Hillary is saying uh, basically that we we need to do something, and and former sectors. State Condoleezza Rice said a couple of days ago where she expects the United States and NATO to do things outside of the UN and so forth. Um, and it's like these are two totally separate things. The thing is, they're the right hand, the left hand to one person, and they are connected. Uh, Syria and Iran have a mutual defense uh, treaty, and their future lies uh, with being able to defend one another as well as Lebanon. And when when war breaks out there, uh, it will be a Shiite versus Sunni war throughout the Middle East. It will be an Arab versus uh, uh, is Israel and uh, Muslim versus Israel and Persian versus Israel battle. And it will become uh, a nightmare from hell from day one. But uh, you have all these false narratives, this false narrative. this gr- And I, I said a few days ago that we could expect to see more false uh, uh, flag massacres of people, and what's so horrible is not only is are is the American paid for and Western paid for mercenaries deliberately going in and slaughtering these these children and old people and young people and civilians. Not only are they slaughtering them, then you have people like Hillary Clinton coming out with her crocodile tears. Oh, this is so terrible! We've got to go in and stop Assad, knowing full well Assad had nothing do within the people that she's in effect part of are the ones that did it in the first place. Well, this is the false narrative, and it's, it's being developed, and it's moving towards a terminal stage in terms uh, of Syria, and that's, that's very concerning. Now, the, the, um, at the same time, uh, the uh, kind of almost military alliance that Russia and China uh, have uh, with a number of other countries, the Shanghai Cooperative Organization, has just made a, uh, they've drawn a line in the sand, and they've dismissed, they've issued a statement dismissing it's unacceptable any use of force against Iran, saying yeah, exactly. that's and, the, and the Russians, by the way, when they brought this out to CSCO, Russia is a is a uh, a member of the SEO. Uh, well, the so China. Yeah, and so what happens is they've come together lockstep and said no and yet and I don't know how to say no in Chinese, but I'm, I'm sure it's a very str- strong no. <laughs> I used and, to uh, I used to study Chinese, but that was many years ago. So the fact is that the Shanghai Cooperation Group and we have to understand now we're dealing with now the largest block of population of military weapons and of new technologies and new factories that have been moved elsewhere, they're all moved to the SCO, uh, and the new oil power of everything from Tajikistan to Azerbaijan. 50% of the Russian military now is Muslim. And the, when they say no, no means no. So this idea that they're going to do an attack at any time is pure This insanity. is not going to be Libya. No. This is going to be the end of civilization if they do this attack. Absolutely. The end. Not a not another chapter, nothing after this, no war after, it's the end.
Welcome back. And uh, what we're talking about in the break, actually, is the coming together in Europe of the empire of clay and iron, strong and weak nations, iron, nations of iron and of clay, weak and strong. We're also seeing, in a sense, in the flesh, the human flesh being clay and the demonic powers being iron. We see also the rise of of a disaster that's going to happen in Japan. It's probably going to, to precipitate the final straw that will break the Europeans. The number two creditor nation in the world, which is Japan, is going to pull back after a massive catastrophe this summer. And when we look at the military plans, which are still moving forward, on the one hand, we have Obama promising the long fuel retankers for or the jets to, to deliver nuclear weapons to Iran. We have the Russians and the Chinese and the Shanghai Cooperation Group this week coming out saying absolutely no to any military action. And we know that Ban Ki-moon from the United Nations is trying to say the lie. And I turn on BBC News. It's just disgusting. In fact, I can't stand four seconds of it. What all it says is they have the same talking head idiots trying to lie to us and say that the Syrian government is responsible for all the deaths in Hula, when in fact what we have, and you know this yourself, you said it very strategically a few weeks ago, people are getting into communities, bringing rocket propelled grenades and other materials that are anti-tank weapons, going to civilian areas and then shooting at civilian populated areas. And when the military tries to even bring in tanks, they can't bring them in because they get them boxed into places where they can't back their tank yeah, up. They make, and getting, kill zones, they make kill zones in, in inside the, uh, of civilian city. areas. And then they get the, yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. the, the the methodology that that uh, modern warfare calls for is to lay an artillery barrage down, uh, unless you can make an airstrike, and, and that becomes difficult uh, in, in a urban area. So, they, they, whether it's an airstrike or whether it's it's uh, an artillery barrage, and, the, and their their army is a little bit more modeled after the old Soviet, where they use uh, more uh, tubed and tubeless artillery. And so they lay an artillery barrage down. Well, that gets civilians killed. But the latest massacres, they, that, they, they weren't killed uh, that way. They, they weren't killed by artillery. They were shot in the head at close range, or they had their throats slit. And in a few cases, they were set on fire. Now, this, you know, um, in all societies and all people, there are some people that are not just sociopathic, but very psychopathic or, or murderers. And uh, some and armed forces often identify people like that. And when they 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 have to send somebody in for something particularly brutal and dirty, those are the type of people they select. Uh, because they enjoy it and they're very good at it. And what we've done with these uh, mercenaries is there's a high number of of just really over-the-top nuts. And those are the ones they set in to do this. And, I mean, to kill a child, to to slit a child's throat, to kill a well, mother or what other. You remember you that a lot of these people, though, they're more they're... Than, than whale poop. You have to be... Well, you have to be evil to the absolute core of your very soul. Let, let me say to the people they recruit, though, uh, uh, Tim. We have from uh, Benghazi, the ancient pirate capital of the eastern Mediterranean on the North African coast. Benghazi, the place where mm-hmm. Tunisia, where they recruited these monsters, many of them going into Syria right now, are literally... Al-Qaeda functionaries, graduates of Camp X-Ray, that have actually been supported by Hitler and Clinton verbally on the national news as our so-called Secretary of State, given military weapons and material and air cover support when they ripped the guts out of the, of the uh, regime in Libya. And now these same monsters are over there. They're, the king of Saudi Arabia is paying $50,000. So yeah, fifty thousand dollars to to recruit anyone who's willing to fight and die and kill in Syria is given fifty thousand dollars for them, and if they die, it's given to their relatives by the king of Saudi Arabia. I'll tell you, when you're living on on uh, on on uh, uh, goat milk, goat milk, and you're living in the desert and you've got nothing, and somebody will pass you all the weapons and ship you over to Syria to kill Syrian uh, Shiites and Christians. By the way, you got to remember. This is not just a thing to get rid of the Shia and Shiites. They're going to get rid of not only the the Jews over there. They want to get rid of the Sunday people well, too. Well, Catholic bishop uh, yesterday made a comment uh, to to that effect that the Christians, you know, have been targeted, and uh, uh, it's not just. Uh, I mean, this is this is evil. 
uh, personified. And it's very disgusting as an American that America is up to its elbows behind the scenes in all this. In well, that's this because we have, uh, we have people that are being avatared by Satan. Literally, we look at Hillary Clinton, as I say, this woman is a product of transgenerational demonic curses down through hundreds or thousands of years where she literally since the time she was a little girl or was spawned has participated you know first hand or second hand in sex magic rituals and human sacrifice from the day she was born and the same with Obama you look at the man and you see where he was raised by communist atheists has been exposed to bisexuality and drug abuse and God knows what he's been put through both these people we need to pray for because they've taken quote, the remnants of what used to be a human being and instilled it completely with a parasitic, transdimensional, dark energy matter being called a demon. Or an army, That's literally a, a legion. That's a pretty good description, by the way, Dr. Bell. You, yeah, you and when we look at Hillary right Clinton, <laughs> when, when I went and saw, saw Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton directly at Dakota Ridge High School back in 19... Uh, uh, in the, it actually, it was 1999 after Columbine. It was, no, sorry, early 2000. It was right after the Columbine thing. We had... A meeting when they brought in Marine One helicopter, and we met for an hour and a half. And when I met Hillary Clinton, I can say to this day, she is the most evil human being I've ever met on the planet. And I've taken care of people that were on maximum security with a chain around their neck, two guards with weapons aimed directly at the chest of the person I was examining in a, a, a maximum security military hospital for the criminally and seriously insane that were mass murderers, chained literally to their bed with heavy gauge chains to their neck arms and legs and she's a thousand times more evil than that <laughs> this woman this woman reek you go literally it's like walking into a black hole of spiritual darkness when you already come into her presence it's that bad now don't hold back <laughs> yeah. let me well, tell you people, uh, yeah, obama i get the same murder. i get the same i get the same say you know and here's a new york times article about obama literally drooling getting sexual excitement over these baseball cards they call them about how who's going to kill? They not only yeah. killed a Muslim so-called Al Qaeda suspect, but the next day or two after, when they had his funeral, they killed all the mourners that went back to do the funeral. Yeah, he uh, evidently, uh, and when I I think I said on this show that that that's a a sign of a of a very demonic uh, individual. Well, this is not, he, by the way, a Christian minister. This, this, at this. Yeah, this is not a, a, a Christian minister or rabbi. This is the New York Times coming over the article, say, in shock, embarrassed shock, say, did you realize this is what's going on? I mean, oh, I mean, we got somebody within yards Obama of the nuclear football. Obama is known to be a very lazy president, but this is the one part of his job in which he really doesn't have to do that. He really gets into it. He gets to select who gets killed right. by the the robotic aircraft. And there's something very, very wrong about this. But you have to remember, everything about this man's background is a lie. Who his mother is, who his father is, where he was born, where he was raised, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Rahm Emanuel and him had a, have a lifetime membership in in a the largest gay bathhouse in Chicago. Exactly. I mean, this, well, these people. Who's are the man, who, I, I got a joke for you. Who is the father of lies? Satan. And who is the man of lies? Obama. There you go. <laughs> Welcome back, and we're joined with our nuclear expert. His radio name is Chris Harris, a nuclear expert and safety expert consulting with private nuclear reactors and with the NRC. And, of course, many of your colleagues which you're communicating with are starting to get traction with the story we brought out last week, which is the fuel rod assembly. And I hear lots of so-called pundits out there. There's various radio shows and so on trying to talk about this issue. If you don't have expertise in this area, you're flapping your jaws. You're trying to follow the story you don't understand. I have expertise as a radiation toxicology doctor. You're a nuclear expert. They need to listen to us. We're telling them in specific terms 
what can be done, rather than just saying, oh, something must be done. We tell them repeatedly what needs to be done. We're also telling them statistically and technically and engineering-wise what's likely to go next. And now we know that a level 6 or 7 earthquake, even probably a level 6, will break that seal, those fuel rod assemblies, and just in cooling pool 4, 1,535 of them, they just need to get hot enough. And the analogy I used in the break when I talked to uh, Tim and uh, Chris uh, Harris is think of, of say, 5,000 bottles of Dom Perignon, and only this one is Dom, you're dead, champagne. <laughs> and each bottle is $5,000, only the bubbles are radioactive with plutonium, strontium, cesium-137, and radioiodine. And you raise these up and decide you've flown them in on one of these big C-130 Hercules, Her- Hercules jets, and you decided they're stuck on the tarmac in, in let's say, Phoenix, Arizona, and it's 118 out, and all of a sudden somebody made a big mistake and realized... Gee, there's 5,000 bottles of champagne sitting on the tarmac, and it's 118 degrees. What's going to happen to those champagne bottles? They're going to pop. Now, when these bottles pop, you don't even need a zirconium fire. You don't need a meltdown and aquarium going down to the groundwater table, which will happen eventually. So the, we're going to have a major burp of radiation. What I've been saying is, and you said this now this, just a minute ago, the seal is the next thing to go. We've already had failure now of these so-called high-speed pumps. They're literally taking radioactive, super radioactive water, so radioactive they can't get near it to even handle the pumps, repumping it back in the top, and it's so murky they can't even tell what the water level is. They have no remote sensing, so if these guys are sitting in the lunchroom or the so-called control room, they can't even tell unless someone walking across, let's say, a half a mile or a mile away downwind says, how come there's extra zeros on my radiation detector sitting on the front window of my truck? Now, let me tell you what Fukushima is doing and TEPCO and the Japanese government burning hundreds of millions of tons, and I got a report yesterday, my wife sent me, and there's pictures all over the Internet now in New York Times, etc., about this giant concrete and steel dock that literally ended up uh, in northern Oregon on the coast. 1.5 million tons. They estimate 5 million tons of debris is going to land on the coast of British Columbia, Washington State, Oregon, and California. We have radioactive tuna, not one or two tuna radioactive, all of the tuna are radioactive. We have radioactive fish, we have radioactive seaweed, we have radioactive people and nobody's checking the, the, the grass that our cattle are eating, nobody's checking the, the accumulated radioisotopes in our food, we're not doing altitude analysis along the coast, the Midwest and on the East Coast and in Europe, no one's reporting real-time monitors or putting it on a screen where you can actually look at see real-time plume transfer and monitoring from space of uh, where the hell the plume is, because the plume may have a lot of what we call laminar flow, which means it can actually be pretty tightly controlled at a certain altitude. You could be flying at 20,000 feet, and your radiation detector on your aircraft will say, oh, you don't have any millisieverts at all. And well, all we've of a sudden, had that technology you, for decades. Right, and we can fly 4,000 feet higher, and all of a sudden you go, gee, uh, co-pilot, tap the side of that thing. How come there's a whole bunch of extra ones and zeros there, and it looks like we're flying through a cloud of radiation? That's why we have all these uh, air slide stewards and stewardesses. They didn't have a bad dry cleaner. People need to grasp this. And I hear all these so-called experts saying this. You have to ask the right questions. Like Leonardo da Vinci said, the most important thing to learn and to become wise, to become intelligent, is not to seek the answer. It's to seek a better question. And when we're giving you better questions here, we have to have the technical background to tell you those. The better question is, can those seals hold? No. The answer is no. How long will they probably fail? Well, with neutron annealing, heating, earthquakes, etc., with high-speed pumps failing, I'm saying within five to six weeks, we're going to have a failure with a massive burp. And by the way, this is not the end of it. This is not even the end of the beginning of the disaster. This is not the end of the disaster. A lot of people thought, oh, it's off the news radar. Fukushima is over. We don't need to prepare ourselves. Don't worry. That's over in Japan. They're having a bad day. They're even telling them over in Japan. They described the radiation, and this got pulled, by the way, from the news. They described it on the news media because they got a media company to describe radiation as an angry Japanese housewife. It nags you. It bothers you. It gets you so upset, but it doesn't hurt you. And they pulled it because... People, especially women, who had two clues over there. By the way, the men must have their testicles pulled off through the inguinal canal because you can't see them because the women have more cojones than these men over there because they're in the protest march are saying, what the hell are you doing? Women well, are they aborting. Know they know it's going to kill their babies. They know it's going to kill their babies. And let me tell you, if you're over in Japan and you're a pregnant Japanese woman and these women, 
I pray for them that they, number one, for God's sakes, get away from northern Japan. The TEPCO people aren't doing anything. And by the way, don't get arrogant if you, oh, those poor people on the west coast of the United States. Let me tell you, it can fall in the Midwest. It can fall in Eastern Europe. This radiation knows no bounds. And by the way, they had a big in, spike in Florida yesterday. Yeah, here's the other thing you should be aware of, everybody. This radiation isn't just going to sit in the northern hemisphere. Don't think, I'm going to Vilcabamba. I'm going to New Zealand. I already put it for my passport. Well, you may add an extra year or two of your life, but if this thing blows, you're going to be uh, sequestering and bioaccumulating over decades radioisotopes. And don't think, by the way, that this won't have immediate effects. The radiation release could very well cause the ozone layer to just go poof, because we know, and we've talked about this on the program with our scientist Ann Morrison, I've checked with other climatologists, the major decrease in our ozone layer is caused by the radiation release of radioiodine and xenon-133 from Fukushima. It is chewing away chemically through a process of degradation the ozone layer. That's not yeah. good. With our, the reason why our UV index is so damn high is because of Fukushima. The reason why our climate is so crazy is because of Macondo, which means in African, the devil's food. 61 years ago, a year before I was born, in New Orleans they had a conference and were told, do not drill an assault dome at, at Macondo. They were told, the government even warned, had government officials and other experts warning British Petroleum not to drill there, yet the American government wouldn't even allow our corporations, our oil companies to drill there, but BP well, got when it. You look, go when ahead. you look at the pattern of this, this is a population reduction effort. Agenda 21, that's why the globalist Bilderbergers are meeting, because you know what? Don't let a good disaster go to waste. Guess what? No one in their right mind will try to have a child now because the rate of abortions and spontaneous miscarriages will be obscene. If a child is 100 billion times more likely to have a birth defect after Fukushima, how likely is it that women will try to use some form of birth control or unfortunately they'll abort a lot of the children because they're going to have trisomies because when you have radiation effects, the very first thing you have is trisomy 13, 18, and 21, which is Down syndrome. Okay. Then the next is birth defects, limb bud defects, neural tube defects, heart defects, uh, endocardial cushion, uh, all kinds of horrifying things happen. And people say, no, 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 that's not going to happen, Dr. Deagle. So you're talking to an expert. You don't have a right to the facts when I have a right to the facts, and you don't. And out there I get really angry when I hear people think, well, that's just your opinion, Dr. Deagle. No, it damn well isn't. It damn well isn't. And I have, I've had my fill of people who think... What's scientific well, fact? You're not talking opinion, you're talking scientific Right, fact. and I can't put specific dates, but I'm going to put a specific date because I say uh, of the next major burp. And I didn't say this is the end of it either. I didn't say, oh, after July everything will cool down and it'll be fine. No, no. I'm saying the next major burp, we already had one in April, nobody reported it. We found it through uh, Anthony, uh, Alexander Higgins' website. So I'd like you to talk about this, uh, Chris, because... People need a grasp just how crazy this is and how Obama, when he's bouncing around Hollywood trying to go to his gay and lesbian friends in Hollywood and trying to get more money to get reelected so he can push more gay and lesbian marriages and push more agendas and arm the heck out of the Israelis so they'll commit political and, and military suicide in attacking the Islamic nations when it's not Islamic nations, they're attacking Russia and China. This is going to be... I call it Armageddon. People don't understand it. They think, oh, that's just your theory. It's not theory, people. We talked in the first hour with Jonathan Kahn. If you don't grasp this now, there's no hope. There's none. Back in a moment with Chris's answer to Kim Alexander. Welcome back. Um, Chris, tell us about your response to this. Uh, you know, we have the Chinese uh, de rejecting uh, scrap metal from Chiba. We have uh, radioactive cars delivering all over the place. We actually have radioactive rice being given to third world countries yeah. from, from China, from Japan. We have the Japanese literally growing rice now, rice crops in northern Australia, hoping to have rice to deliver to their people. And, of course, the Japanese are doing a, what I call a very serious crime. They're burning their trash which includes million, hundreds of millions of tons of trash, much of it quite radioactive, and averaging, this process is called averaging, where they take very radioactive material with material that's very, not very radioactive, and averaging so they can burn it all, which means they're going to remobilize all the initial radiation released from the nuclear reactors, and they're doing nothing to contain by 
tenting, and again, remember, you don't put a concrete sarcophagus, a Kevlar spider silk tent, a corium catcher, which could be made with depleted uranium containers, with drilling machines underneath the site, seawall, and a moat, or multiple moats around it, a combination of filters of charcoal, HEPA, and buckyball carbon nanotube filters is what you require. You need to solidify the nuclear waste into solids, which we have solid waste conversion technologies for three decades. We need to contain this with radiation-proof robots, which we have from our deep space projects, which I know are classified. We're doing nothing. We have no word from the idiot in chief in the White House, Obama, who's flitting around, prancing around, trying to get reelected to do more damage to our economy and our, and our republic. And on the other hand, we don't have any response from the United Nations to the uh, Ambassador Murata, who literally is panicking because when Senator Wyden and even Dianne Feinstein came back from their trip over there, Senator Wyden is still freaked out. And he presented this to the Senate, and we don't have any reports from either CPAC or anybody saying just how bad it is and how much worse it's going to get. Nothing. Well, yeah, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but China is known for pooping all over its uh, ecological system in the name of industry and all. When they are rejecting uh, scrap metal from uh, from Japan because it's too radioactive for them to use, that's pretty bad, I would think. And yeah, that's, that's like going that's right. like going to the uh, junior minion of Satan and say, "I'm sorry, this material is too hot for us to take." Yeah, so that's I mean, <laughs> that's just a selling. Yeah, that's 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 the. That's the utmost of insults. Yeah, it's really ridiculous. So so the fact is, by the way, people need to understand the cyclonic air movements. 22 provinces within one week of the March 11, 2011, uh, super tsunami and earthquake were radioactive detecting in China. So most people don't realize food and other materials coming out of China are also getting significantly more radioactive. Everybody thinks it's an east-to-west wind flow. No, it's not. It's cyclonic, including the water currents to bring radioactive water into the South China Sea, which is why in Seoul, South Korea, you can go to grocery stores and they have radiation detectors at the bottom of the fish counter and the produce counter, so you can take it over and see if your food goes click, click, click. And if your food talks to you and goes click, 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 you back away from the food counter. Well, the the big advantage is, though, that, uh, you know, if you you start glowing in the dark, you save a lot of money on your electric bill. That's to keep your eyes open so they can be flashlights. (laughs) Today's release, fresh release. I mean, you got to use some humor. It's so crazy. It's like, and then we have non-experts giving opinions. Always, and they want to. They always want to have pipe in and say something. Look, this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to give this timeline again. I want to get your opinion, uh, Tim and, and and Chris. I believe that this summer, it may not be mid-July, but it'll be August. It'll be the next few months. We're going to have a massive radiation burp. We're going to have a panic that will eventually finally hit the psyche of the Japanese, and they're going to have an evacuation. Kyoto has already made a statement offering to be the new capital of Japan. Uh, come on now, people. Put one and one together. One and one is still two. And then, what's that happened? The second largest creditor nation in the world behind China, and China's teetering. We're going to have a collapse of the European system, and we're going to have five major banks. that are going to go under, and we will have a bank holiday in America. And I believe the abominator will preside over this before the election. I think you're an optimist. Yeah, well, that's what I think. That's optimistically, how bad I think it is. I mean, yeah, I'm and the thing is, I think they're literally going to hold off the the quote the nuclear attack on Iran until after the election because Obama's already promised that uh, to the Israelis, which will cause three to five hundred dollar barrel oil, total chaos, nuclear radiation everywhere, the Bashir reactor, the Association of Atomic Scientists and Doctors for Social Responsibility have made a statement that the attack on the Bashir reactor will downwill kill within thirty to sixty days thirty two million people. That's our estimates. Well, well, Just to be sure that doesn't even include the nuclear war in the Middle East that'll ensue afterward yeah. and and the further not handling Fukushima and the retaliation by China and Russia against our cities with nuclear weapons that are staged not only off the coast a few hundred miles in deep submarines that we can't strike from the Russians, nuclear facilities that are at the Guatemala and Mexican border that the Chinese have put in, and in Venezuela, medium-range nuclear missiles that the Chinese have placed that are placed in Venezuela aimed at America like the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I know there's intelligence people listening to this, You need to know that we have plans on the table. That's why Hugo Chavez is in such a panic, because he knows 
he's screwed because he knows that we know, and I know the supernaturally and otherwise, he's made deals with the, with the Russians and Chinese to put nuclear missiles in Venezuela. I keep getting reports that there are Chinese uh, military aircraft in Mexico, uh, that the yeah, number are. of Russian commandos uh, are still here, and the number is quite high, far higher than what it's Well, been they said 20, but the number I have, and this is conservative, the number I had that went to just just to, to Fort Carson, and I was one of the doctors for Fort Carson, was 600. That's an entire, if you want to call special forces uh, division. Yeah, I've heard that number also there. Now, some people went 20,000, 100,000. At any one time, and people need to know this, since the early 90s, we have won anywhere from 600,000 to 1.2 million foreign soldiers, military personnel being trained from the former Soviet Union CIS nations in Eastern Europe, being trained on our weapons and tactics since for 25 plus years. So this idea it's just an anomaly of the Obama administration is horse hockey, as they say. It's garbage. So, Chris, what do you say to all of these things in terms of the nuclear risk? What, what's being done with the NRC now that they've gotten rid of this re, uh, specialist who wanted to do something, and now they replace with McFarland? What's going to happen with Fukushima now? What's going on? Well, fortunately, that the New Term Task Force did come up with a lot of recommendations, and uh, I don't think they go far enough, but I do think that uh, there's certainly a start that, that all the plants would have to be. And then JASCO did a lot in a lot of that area. Now, if they don't get the That's why down, they got rid of him. They did a JASCO right, right. They removed him because he asked tough questions. He wanted safety first. And he, 12 miles from where I live is the Senate Oak Reactor, and these fools after 1,500 tubes failed, and they don't know why they failed, but we talked about the engineering principles of how they were as a bad engineering principle of how these tubes were designed against a special ceiling plate. And I prayed on this as well as studying the information, and I came up and asked you these questions, and you said, yeah, that's where it failed. And they tried to well, say, first of all, it was only a few hundred. This is 1,500 tubes. This reactor means it was venting off radiation for years from the Santa Ana reactor. And if the whole thing goes, we're going to have literally 25, 26 million people in Southern California from San Diego to Los Angeles. They're going to glow in the dark, including the nice, fancy cars of Jay Leno, who tried to crack a joke that it was no big deal. Yeah, well, it is a big deal. and It's uh, a big damn deal. He'll get on his call stream, and he'll be out of there quicker than anybody. But his, his guys' fancy cars, well, he can't get them all out of there, so they're going to glow in the dark. He, he'll have a new sheen to the paint on those cars. <laughs> right, well, I'll be tuning in on June 20th to be listening in on the hearings or, or the uh, the comments from the members of the public at the, on NRC.gov, and you could you could do it, too. Every, all of you can do that also, and you can... Uh, you can listen to what the comments of the industry are based and what day uh, is that again? Trying to push back June twentieth, June twentieth, and I I don't have the exact time, but uh, you can go on NRC.gov and you can okay. go ahead and, and, get, and join uh, for uh, one o'clock to four fifteen p.m. Eastern time. Now, now, by and, the way, uh, next week I, I'm going to be away next Thursday and Friday. I'll do a live show in the first hour of Firing Line on Friday from Portland. But you two gentlemen will be handling the third hour on Thursday, so you'll have me le a lot less of Dr. Deagle to interfere with your dialogue. Uh, a little less energy, but I'm sure you'll get the information across. But the importance is people need to know we're going to be posting, and I'll be posting information every day on Nutramedical and on our live stream channel. And I have my computer equipment and my uh, microphones and everything, so if I need to put something up, it'll be up there. I think we we're literally dealing with a very, very flexible situation. How likely is this to deteriorate in, the, say, the next two months? Oh, in Japan? Uh, that's, yeah. that's very, I mean, right now they don't have any cooling pumps running in their spent fuel pool, Unit 4, because they're both broken and the temperature is going up. But now they, this happened before. So it's not, don't, 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 don't run. It, it's, uh, they fix it very, you know, eventually they get around to fixing it. But the temperature is going up. What that means is that uh, there's still plenty of heat left in those fuel assemblies. Yeah. Yeah, but I, what the I, problem is, at some point, these seals are going to fail. Some fuel, at some point, yep. the fuel rod assemblies are going to pop. Like, as I say, those 5,000 bottles on the tarmac in Phoenix of so $5,000, Dom, you're dead, instead of Dom Pernian. And the Dom, you're dead bottles, called these fuel rod assemblies, 1,535 of them are going to pop in Japan. And we're going to have an evacuation and a major catastrophe. And that's not the end of the beginning but the beginning of the end.